Hi everyone, I'm Jackie from Exam Prep Spain. And today in our essential SAT must know math formulas, I'm going to be covering the discriminant. The discriminant has become increasingly popular on the SAT exam, especially in the non-calculator section, but you may find it as well in the calculator section. But it is an essential formula that you should be aware of and know in order to have total SAT success. Okay, so let's just go into it. Um, so the discriminant, it's part of the quadratic formula underneath the square root symbol. So in case you've forgotten, the quadratic formula, which you should memorize for the SAT exam, it's x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So the discriminant, it's the part under the square root. So it's this part right here, the b squared minus 4ac. And basically it tells us whether there's two solutions, one solution or no solutions. And so this is important in order to solve the problem. We'll see that in the very first problem, but let's just take a look. When b squared minus 4ac, it's greater than zero, there are two real solutions. When b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, there is one real solution. And finally, when b squared minus 4ac um, is less than zero, that means that there is no real solutions. Okay, amazing. So let's keep this information in mind on the following problem. Okay, so here I have this amazing problem, very typical that you may find on the SAT exam. Um, let's look at the language in the problem that can help indicate that this is a discriminant problem. So first, our standard formula, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Um, so basically when you have the X's here and there's some other variable, in this case it's C, um, or there's another variable um, being substituted for C, that's a pretty good indication that in dealing with the discriminant, so two variables, and also the language within the problem. So let's read the problem. In the quadratic equation above, C is a constant for which of the following values of C does the equation have? two different integer solutions. <clears throat> Do you remember from our table above what two different integer solutions means? It means it should be greater than, we'll set the problem with greater than zero. Okay, so why is this important? So now using my knowledge of the discriminant and just to show you like this correlates to the A, this correlates to the B and this will correlate to the C. So my A value, there's nothing um, there's no coefficient, so it's just one. B is equal to four and C is equal to C. And I'm gonna say B squared minus four AC is, oops, what am I doing? I'm already putting this in. <clears throat> so B squared minus four AC is greater than zero. Next, I will substitute my values. So <clears throat> four squared minus four times one times C is greater than zero. So basically four squared is 16 minus four C is greater than zero. Now I'm going to, well, if I want, mm -hmm, I'll just move 16 to each side. So subtract 16, I have negative four C is greater than negative 16. And now to solve for C, I'm going to divide each side by negative four. Remember, when you divide by a negative, your with an inequality, your sign will be flipped or reversed. Um, so I'll get that C is actually less than four. Okay, that's amazing and important because there's only one value in my answer choices up here that are less than four. It's not six, it's not five, and it's not four. Perhaps the trap answer might be four because if you didn't remember the table above and you put it equal to zero, you might choose four. However, you won't do that because you have become an SAT master. 
Okay, but the answer clearly is choice A. Okay, amazing. So again, I'm just using the discriminant and the language within the problem to help me solve it. Um, okay, and let's just pop above. Remember, b squared minus 4ac greater than zero, two real solutions equal to zero, one real solution, less than zero, no real solutions. So keep it in mind. Okay, so let me continue to more problems. So there's more problems in this because I believe through more practice, it gets embedded in your subconscious mind and you'll be able to memorize this process and have it down for your SAT exam day. Okay, so here I have um, for the quadratic solution or for the quadratic equation above, if B is a constant, okay? Um, if the equation has no real solutions, which of the following must be true? So again, I have two variables. I have X and I also have in this case B. And I also have the language from our chart above, which is no real solutions, <clears throat> which the no real solutions, remember, was BA squared minus 4AC is less than zero. Amazing. And remember, just to, for those of you that might be newer to this, this will correlate to A, my B is B, and my five or my C is equal to five. So I have all my values, A equals three, B equals B, and my C values equal to five. Now, once again, I'll plug this into my formula, discriminant formula. So I have B squared, which I'm solving for. So B squared minus four times three times five is less than zero. <clears throat> okay. So now I have that b squared, four times three, it's, well, negative four times three, it's negative 12 times five, it's 60 is less than zero. And then I'll add 60 to each side, so I'll get that b squared is indeed less than 60. And looking at the answer choices, um, <clears throat> That's exactly what I have, again, in answer choice A. So you see, once again, the language, there's two variables in the problem, and also in this case, no real solutions, which helps me to solve. Okay. Continuing on our journey of the discriminants. Okay, so here we have another. Um, in the equation above, C is a constant if the equation has exactly one solution, which of the, what is the value of C? Okay, so I know my A is equal to one, my B value is equal to 10, and my C value equals C. Here I have that it's one solution, so that's going to be equal to zero. So now I do B squared minus 4AC equals zero. My next step is to simply substitute in the values. So my b 10 squared minus four times one times c is equal to zero. 100 minus four c equals zero. I can add four c to each side. So I get 100 is equal to four c, divide each side by four, 25 is equal to c. Amazing. So yet again, we have solved using the discriminant. And final discriminant problem um, to close our SAT must know essential formulas is this one. Okay, so here in the equation above, T is constant. If the equation has no real solutions, which of the following could be the value of T? Okay, in this case, I don't have it set equal to zero, but that's okay, I'll just subtract t. So I'll do two x squared minus four x, um, well, minus t is equal to zero. Now I can get all my values, my a, it's 
two, B is negative four, and C it's negative T. Remember when it's no real solutions, it was less than zero. Just going back here, no real solutions, less than zero. So I'll say B squared minus four AC. is less than zero. And now, once again, we shall plug in our values. So negative four squared minus four times two, and my C value is negative T. Less than zero, so 16 minus four times two is eight. So I have negative eight times negative T, so it'll become plus eight T is less than zero. <clears throat> okay, so now I can, well, I can say 16 is less than negative eight T, and now I can divide each side by negative eight. And remember, once again, I'm dividing by negative, so my sign's going to be switched or changed, simply the inverse. Okay, so 16 by 8 is negative 2 is greater than positive t. Okay, so basically, um, looking at my amazing answer choices, I know that t has to be less than negative 2. And there's only one answer, right? And the answer choice is that is less than negative two, which is the amazing answer choice, negative three. Okay, so those are some great SAT problems that perhaps you won't see the same exact problems, but you will see very, very similar problems on your SAT exams. So remember, when you see no real solutions or one real solution or two real solutions, and you see something like T is constant, or basically there's two variables in your quadratic equation, you'll be dealing with the discriminant. So remember, these have become increasingly popular on the SAT exam, especially in the non-calculator section. It's an essential formula to help, oops, <laughs> to help boost your score. So make sure that you know it for your SCT day. Um, so guys, I'll be posting amazing SAT videos at least once a week here on our YouTube channel. If you like it, please subscribe. And if you want something clarified or a certain concept, let me know in the comments or feel free to reach out to us at www.examprepspain.com or email us and we can help you on your SAT journey. I hope this has been helpful and has served you and will help to increase your SAT score. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.